Companies are just big collections of projects. Huge collections of decisions. What you do really determines the future success of your companies. You guys are at the crux of making decisions of what happens, what doesn't happen, what gets kept, what gets killed, and your influencers. A lot of people think, oh, it's just to make the project more efficient. But you're absolutely leaders in your organizations that can change the way that your companies perform. And I'm going to give you tools to even be more effective at doing that day in and day out. The challenge is that people just aren't good at getting things done. So you've got companies that are big collections of projects, and you guys are the ones trying to wrangle them all in, and people like me come with these projects and I'm horrible at getting things done, and it's your job to help me get things done. So your job even becomes more important, and then you layer on top of that adult old David Allen quote, we can do anything, but we can't do everything, right? Because as a marketing guy, I'm gonna come to you with 15 ideas. And I'm gonna to wanna to do them all, because they're all great ideas. And I'm gonna be very convincing. In fact, I'm gonna show you how you can be as convincing, trying to convince people of what you want. So here's what happens in life. We, all of you, every person, we spend our days choosing between options. As you choose, you're gonna turn left, you're gonna turn right. You're gonna go for a run, you're gonna go, go for a walk, or you're gonna watch The Biggest Loser, right? What are you gonna choose? Our days are filled with choices. So the question for you is, how do people choose? We choose to do this project, but to kill that project. We choose to go to this meeting or not go to this meeting. There's all these choices. So we're gonna talk about how people choose. Here's how we make decisions is we gather disparate pieces of information, and we do this all day long, can't turn it off, and we put them into our brain, and then we create a belief and a decision about what we think. And this is how people decide whether they're excited to work on your project or not excited to work on your project. It's how your management and your senior executives decide that's a good project that we should keep or that's a bad project we should kill. They take all these disparate pieces of information, and some of them are data, and some of them are emotions, right? They all get in your brain and they're partly rational and they're partly emotional. That's just how our brains work. So if you can learn how to influence people's brains, would that be a pretty powerful thing? Saw Jerry O'Brien speak today. Uh, it was fantastic, uh, very entertaining. Uh, loved his insights into how decision makers think. Good tips on how to influence uh, the decision makers. What's the decision that we've made about Monday? We don't like it. Uh, right, Monday. Well, how the heck did we all make a decision about Monday? It doesn't even have a marketing budget, <laughs> right? But we all think this thing about Monday. Let me give you a tougher one. Here's a tougher one. What do we, what do we decide about marriage? Oh, silence. <laughs> it just depends who you talk to, doesn't it? Everyone's perspective is different. Is the, is the perspective of someone who works on your team different from the perspective of your executive, different from your perspective of the customer who, by the way, pays you money and allows your company to exist. Everyone's got a different viewpoint on the outcome that you're gonna deliver. So why do I care? I know why you care. Because you want your companies to work on the projects that are gonna make the biggest difference and make the most money, right? That's what we want. I'll tell you what projects people wanna work on they want to work on the ones that are going to make a difference. Employees want to see their project come to life and say, oh, we worked really hard on that and it worked. It made a difference. Have you noticed that certain companies, even through the worst economy ever, continue to grow and thrive and other companies just tanked? You know what the difference is? Companies that are clear on the value that they provide to that external customer that we were talking about. If you're clear on what you're providing to that external customer, your teams are clear on what you're providing to the external customers, your projects will be aligned against that and your executives will say yes to the things that are right for those external people. So what if you could, on your project teams, get more people aligned on the right stuff and aligned on killing the wrong stuff, Get more people more excited and more motivated and make sure that you're navigating using the right things. What if you could do that? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you F5, it's not five, it's actually six questions 
Normally I give people five, but since you guys are PMI, you get a bonus question <laughs> that I actually created just for the PMI group, to be totally honest. Five questions that you can ask yourself today about your company. Have you ever noticed the best leaders don't talk? They ask questions and then listen? What if you could create, instead of a, a talking organization, a listening organization? And you can do that by asking simple questions that will help your company navigate to better, more impactful projects, thereby getting your teams more excited to work on the stuff because they believe in the things that they're working on. I found it extremely engaging. I particularly am interested in trying out his six questions at my next HR team meeting. Everything isn't the answer. Which are the ones that are gonna help you sell more stuff? And when you come up against projects that you're like, I'm not sure about that, say, ask these questions. Well, now, what is it, the, who's the target? What's the insight about them? What's the outcome that we're gonna deliver for that? Why would they believe us? What's our because? Those kinds of questions will help you create a listening learning culture versus a go do it culture without thinking about it. I'm gonna show you how we use this exact process that you saw to make an extra 250 million bucks a year on Coors Light. Do you know how hard it is to print thermochromatic ink on the outside of an aluminum can? It took us two years to figure out how to do it without the ink smudging. But you know what? The team in the plant and the project management team were fully, fully dedicated to it. And you know why? Because they knew why we were doing it. We knew the external customer we were serving. They knew where we were going and that this is an important project that they wanted to be associated with. Because at first when you walk in there and you say, we gotta turn the liner blue, they go, you're crazy. But then when you walk them through these few questions and you say, well, here's what we did. We looked at our consumers and we looked at what they want and we looked at the outcome they're looking for and this delivers something that no one else in the market delivers. They look at that project in a new way. Coors Light became last year the number two selling beer in the country. It now beats out Budweiser. Bud Light number one, Coors Light number two, Budweiser and then Miller Light. If you do this process, it actually works and it will make your company money.